Welcome one and all to my YouTube channel. Got another Easy Drummer 3 video here for you. We're going to get right into it. Thought we could do something a little fun today. I wanted to play around with this little guy right here, my bandmate. I don't know if you've met him. He's kind of quiet, but he's very effective. Um, well, let's get into it. Um, what I've got here, I got a wave file. I recorded a riff. This is a riff of mine. This is from a song of mine, so I won't get any copyright issues. And if I do, I have no one to blame but myself, and that would be the irony of it, wouldn't it? So um, I'm going to drag that in. Let's see what it does. It analyzes it. It's telling me that um, it's estimating that that was recorded at 120 BPM, and it was. Uh, if you do click on the box, you see you do have a couple options that it does give you other suggested tempos, um, custom tempos here, two other ones below it. For the sake of this video, we're going to stick with what it actually was recorded at, which was 120. Time was 4-4. Okay. Wow, that was quick. Um, notice here the filter, the filter, okay, straight. Straight time, 4-4. Four, four. It's giving me a lot, a lot of options here. Okay, first thing first, on this particular track, just so you guys know, full disclosure, I recorded this with a little bit of distortion, but not much. And, the, and normally, when I like to lay down guitar tracks, I like a little distortion. I want some fuzz, a little bit of hair on the bone. You know how it is. Any rock and roll guys out there and girls. But for the sake of this uh, software maximizing its potential, it's recommended that you record it as clean as possible. And it's because the AI recognizes the transient. It's a transient sort of AI. So if your transients are smeared with distortion, you're not going to get the best results. So just keep that in mind. So if you lay down something, put it in here, and you're not happy with what you're getting, make sure you you look back to see if, hey, maybe I recorded with a little too much distortion. Just try it clean, and you'll be shocked. Um, so full disclosure ahead of time. Get that out of the way. Now let's move on to it. Um, we're going to first play the track so you can hear it. All right, you guys get the idea. So I basically played that same riff, uh, did a couple different variations in terms of, I think toward your or toward the end here, I kind of did all downstrokes on it. Um, so just to kind of see what this baby can do and how, if anything, it would change in this entire piece or if it would just stay consistent. I don't know. I'm going to do this with you guys for the first time. So. Um, Let's get started here. We'll just try the first one. Okay.
you guys notice that when you raise this this option to increase the snare, not only does it in some areas increase the actual snare hit, you're increasing the ghost notes, which is very, very cool. I don't know if that's in proportion to the hits or how the algorithm sees that, but that's just notice that. And why is that important? Because it further defines realism. And that's what we're going for here. That's the whole idea of why we have this. Again, our bandmate um, and the AI is trying to simulate a bandmate. And the ghost notes help establish that. So very cool. train beat this option here guys they give you if you like a groove just click on this little drop down box here and you can actually find it uh, in the folder that this particular file came from as you can see they do list it here but it's really cool to have it here where you just hit one button and it'll take you right to the grooves page so very cool let's try some blues <laughs> Keep in mind, guys, I don't know if you notice this. Remember, the song was recorded, or the riff was recorded at 120. The algorithm um, determined that as well. But some of the files that it is giving matching groove options for, you can see here what the original the tempo was. Now, the engine does you know, calculate for that and, and bring it up to your tempo. But one of the problems sometimes you'll have with that, especially like, let's say I want to use this and I drag it in, and uh, there's a few spots, if you listen, like that little 
drum lick right there. It sounds, sometimes it'll sound a little too forced, or maybe it'll sound a little bit behind the beat, and that's usually because the it's not recorded at the selected tempo of the file that was drugged in. Again, not a big issue. How I deal with something like that is I would drag that in here and I go, I really like this beat, but there's those spots that are a little rushed for me or maybe they're dragging a little bit. Just drag it in here. Go to your, gr or your grid editor. You can actually work with all your timing here. You can nudge it a little bit if you want. Just select which ones are maybe a little rushed or a little behind. It's not a problem. So just so you guys are aware of that, it's nothing wrong with your... Um, you know, with the actual software, with the, the engine itself. It's just, that's a product of uh, different tempos, different BPMs. And so just be aware of that down the road. All right, guys, there you go. I hope that helped. That was a lot of fun just to kind of show you what this thing can do. So, again, when you do drag a file in there, try to have it as clean as you can. Or um, if you do put distortion on it, you got to play with it because sometimes if you just got to play with distortion, just minimize it. Um, and you'll be so blown away by what this will do to uh, be that bandmate for you that, you know, a lot of us want when we're songwriting. So until the next video, remember, if you can, do me a favor, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.